Jazzcast Pros. Hey, welcome to the Healthy Illness Podcast. I am your host, Kelly Marie. Listen up, today is going to be an incredible episode. Like, subscribe, and share. Today, I have an interview for you that I think you're going to love. Marie Cannon is currently the commissioner for Erie County's Department of Social Services. A huge job, right? And in her professional capacity, she manages over 700 staff. She is responsible for delivering and creating and making sure over 25% of Erie County residents um, who utilize the Department Department of Social Services are able to receive the assistance that they need in times of need. And so I thought it would be great to have her on the show because she did um, the panel that I had uh, on mental health as a professional woman. Dr. Michelle was one of those panelists as well. And she really spoke to me, you know, and I got a lot out of hearing her participate on the panel about what it means to be a professional woman, what it means to be a professional Black woman, what it means to prioritize your own self-care, to prioritize your own mental health, to prioritize your own health. And I'm like, if she, you know, speaking to me, then she might be speaking to you too. So I am super excited to have Marie on the podcast today. I am so honored. Thank you. Just thank you. So let's dive right in. Healthy Illness is a podcast helping you to live a healthy life and build healthy relationships while living with mental health conditions. Now, I am a woman living with mental health conditions. And so I use my life, I use my story, I use my years of therapy and my training as a peer to help you be able to live the type of healthy life you want, regardless of having a mental health diagnosis or going through a tough patch, a healthy life is possible. Thank you, Marie, for joining me on the Healthy Illness Podcast. I wanted to just give people an opportunity to hear a little bit about you. You know, you're the commissioner of social services for Erie County, which is a huge role, but you're a Black woman. And I want to be able to let people hear directly from Someone who has been in all the positions, has been in all of the spaces, has the multiple roles, is a wife, has all these hats that they wear, and also prioritizes themselves. Thank you, Kelly, for inviting me to share. That's how I see this. So what you will see, I first will start with uh, Marie Cannon, the commissioner. What you'll see is somebody that's committed to ensuring that our community gets the resources that is needed. Like I have high expectations for myself and for my staff because I believe the work is so important. My other goal is really to ensure that we're moving from just surviving to thriving. So the work is, I think, is monumental because one out of four Erie County residents receive some kind of public assistance. There isn't one zip code in Erie County where, where there isn't someone who receives uh, some kind of assistance. So I, I take the work very seriously. But then because I take this work so seriously, it spills over into Marie, who you're going to see at the grocery store, trying to uh, pick up fresh fruits to eat better. So my other roles, that's what I do. That's not who I am. Who I am is I'm a daughter, I'm a wife, I'm a a mother, a stepmother, I'm a friend, I'm an auntie, one of the best aunties. But uh, (laughs) 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 I'm a a community advocate, I'm a minister in my church, I facilitate women's group, and and we've been on this journey of really taking care of, of ourselves. So what I do and who I am are connected And one of the things, honestly, that I had to learn lately is really separating the two in terms of setting boundaries and really saying, you know, if I'm going to do everything that I've been assigned to do, and that's how I look at everything that I do, then I have to take care of myself. And it's been, I I will tell you, it's been a, a real journey. It's been a journey about setting the boundaries around what I do and who I am. 
I think one of the growing points for me is saying, I can't do what I've been assigned to do if I don't take care of myself. One of my goals is to be a radical self-care practitioner. I am Mm. very goal-oriented. I have goals around finances, education, but the one that I've learned recently is to be a radical self-care practitioner. And I think that is important, especially for women, especially especially for Mm -hmm. Black women, because we, we operate in these spaces that when I show up as a woman, there is sexism. When I show up as a Black woman, Mm -hmm. there is racism. So when we walk into spaces, Mm -hmm. it is not just sexism, not just racism. It is both of those. And the intersection of that, I think, can do lots of damage to our psyche, to our sense of self, you know, all all of that. Um, And I've and honestly, I've had just countless experiences When I show up and they didn't expect that the commissioner was going to be a black woman, I will just share one of my um, special assistants was, and both of them now were were white guys, and they would literally have conversations with my assistants because in their minds, they just could not wrap around like, this is the black woman who is making the decisions. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, so I've had all kinds of things, but being black and female in America, it's tough. You know, we, we get the microaggressions, we get the, the insults and, and the microaggressions are, are probably one of the things that I think about. I've heard this being cut like a thousand times, being stung with the bee, like literally, you know, we walk in and we've learned, I've learned to guard myself, you know, because I know somebody's going to do and say something crazy, which limits your authenticity. I just, I want to show up in my full blackness, in my full femininity. I want to show up, you know, how God has made me, you know, my my ups, my downs, my quirkiness. And to not have to stifle that, I think has been very freeing. And so when I say that, that's the part of the journey that I've been on in terms of really self-care started with self-care, but it, it, it's grown into this you know what? I am unapologetic about being black. I am unapologetic about being female. I am unapologetic about being smart. I am unapologetic about being gifted. I am unapologetic about how I show up. Like I got there, (laughs) you know, like I haven't always been there, but that's part of my journey. That's incredible. I love like when you're in the room, I'm like, oh, I could just be, I don't have to get like, I just relax because there's somebody else in the room that I know I can look at. And we had a conversation just in that look, like, I'm not tripping, right? Okay. Okay. We on the same page. Okay. 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 Did I know how to respond now? Because even that, like being new in my day job space in that environment, I'm still learning like what's acceptable, what's not acceptable. Do you speak up? Do you not speak up? I'm like, well, I'm just going to speak because I, yeah, hired me to be <laughs> trouble. So that was the job description. I'm just going to live in what y'all told me to be. And you can, you know, correct later. But there's a weight that comes with that. Like, am I too black? Like I went out and bought African quote, like I'm trying to be blackity black <laughs> every day because that's what y'all hired me to be. So I, there's a freedom in that, but also still a weight, but just thankful that you and others, but you are the person that I know. And I know that there's been other women that have done the work, but you are who I look to. So just thank you for being here in this space for me. And I know you ain't here just for me, but <laughs> for, for well, me. Thank you. Thank you for that. And you know what? I think that is so important. And and like what you just said, like, and we've done it. Like we've just given each other a look like, okay, you know, they know what they're doing. (laughs) This thing is crazy. But to, to have that reaffirmed is so important. Like, so like when we're together and, and I, I see this with, with black women, most of the time is like, I just need you to know that I know what's happening doesn't make any sense. And it is 
you know, foolishness as far as I'm concerned. But what you but what you said about having the weight of this, I will tell you, I felt and still feel not as much the weight of being the first African, first first African American to hold this this spot and to be a you know and a woman on top of it. And so I felt the weight of, you know what, I, I need to lead and live and be in this space so that the people coming, the women, black women or black men as well, who will come after me that I've set the standard of they can do it. Um, so I, I feel that that weight. But I, I will also tell you, as a woman of certain age now, I'm at a point like, I'm at a point in my life like I really don't care. Like, you know, I mean, just the whole journey, I, I will tell you, I, I you know, I'm, I wear my hair natural. You can see right now that it's curly. But I, I struggled with that because I'm like, you know what? What we've typically seen is professional. And this, and I'm like, so now I wear braids. I wear what I want to wear. And at this point, I'm like, what you going to say to me? Like, now I don't really care. But that's a, a journey. And it's only been because of, for me, like real interaction and seeing Black women like own, they, own who they are. And, and that gives permission for other black women to own who they are. And the the, the journey around self-care, I got there and I see all of this as a journey as I'm growing in, you know, and I'm saying to God, I listen, I want to be everything that you've called me to be. I want to do all that you, I want to c- fulfill every assignment that's in my life. You know, I, I don't want to be afraid of, of anything because I want to move out and, you know, and being courageous and doing what's right. That's my prayer. But I, one of the prayers that, that I prayed is, is that I want to live. And I was thinking, why am I praying? I was like, Lord, I want to live. And what I, what I realized is that I was stuck in my role because the work means so much to me. And I know what it means for my community, community. So like I do other work because I want to, you know, I want to, be part of the solution. And so I would say yes to things when I, I didn't have the time, like I, I'm stretched. So, and I got to this place where I'm praying and I'm saying, Lord, I want to live, you know, and, and honestly, I will tell you, God had to reveal some things to me. Like you can't say yes to everything. And what, and there, there's a scripture that says I can do uh, all things through Christ who strengthens me. What I've learned is the all doesn't mean everything. The all just means what you're assigned to do. And part of what I've learned is just because I can do it doesn't mean I'm supposed to do it. And what and what that does, is I also believe this, is that it frees up. I can do it. You can do a lot of things. You, you are multi-talented. But you, what you're saying is I'm going to do what's assigned for me to do. And then what that does, it frees up the space for somebody else to bring their gift to the table. You know, when, when I see greatness, like when I, when I look at you, Kelly, and I see greatness in you, I want to support that. And that that's the, the, the sense of sisterhood that I have. Greatness in other people, as I tell people to go for it, I'm not, you know, I'm not hindered. I'm not bothered. I'm not jealous. When I see greatness in other folks, when I see greatness in us, I am the biggest cheerleader. When I see greatness in you, Kelly, with this work and what you're doing, I'm the biggest cheerleader. But to do all of that and to show up in in our roles and and to show up in who we are, you have to take care of yourself. And then so I was, as I get back to, I was praying and I was like, God, I want to live. You know, I want to enjoy some things. Like, you know, I've been married 17 years. And literally my, my husband, thank God for him. He is so patient and he is so supportive of who I am and what I do. But I had to say, Marie, you still have to make him a priority. And I hadn't been doing that because I'm running and I'm working and I'm saving the community. And I said, you know what? I don't want to get to the end of my life and I haven't lived and I haven't enjoyed the gift that God gave me and my husband. I haven't enjoyed my house, like, like all of these things. And so I got to this place around, I want to live. Uh, and the other piece that, that honestly, that helped me get there is that I have, you know how you have a circle of friends, you know how you hear people passed away, but normally they're older. When it got very close to my circle, then I said, 
Listen, life is not guaranteed. We don't know the number of days that we're promised. I don't know when my time is up. I don't know when Jesus is going to call me to see him. But what happened is that loss happened with people. Like one of my friends died July 2nd. I've been friends with her. We were friends 30 years, 30 years. Um, That's close. And then, you know, then it was another friend that um, was married, was a married couple, and we did lots of things together. And I've probably been friends with them 20 years. And then it was then it was somebody else that I've been friends with for 10 and 15. So when the when death got close to my circle, I had to say, my, that's when my prayer was like, I want to live. And when I say live, I, I'm not saying I want to live long and forever. That's I'm just saying God, in the time that I have on earth, I believe that I am supposed to enjoy. The scripture says that we're supposed to enjoy the fruit of our, our labor. And so I want to enjoy. I want to feed my soul. I want to you know, grow. I want my mind to be expanded. And so when I, I set the goal of a radical self-care practitioner, it meant I had to set boundaries and it, it was, you know, saying no to some things that I actually said to somebody, no is a full sentence. I stopped apologizing. They said, can you do this? I said, no. And I just stopped talking before I would be like, well, I really would try and let me see what my schedule is. So now when I say yes to stuff, it is, it is the things I want to do. I've gotten to a place. No is a full sentence. And I'm very discriminating about how I spend my time. It is like all of that when I when I said I want I want to live. And so for the days that I've had, I want to be in good health because I was I was thinking about that as well. You know, I I don't want to get older and all my health is compromised. And here's why things happen. But because I don't want it to be because of the decisions I've made about not taking care of myself. You know what I mean? Like That's real. Yes. Thing, things happen, but not because I didn't take care of myself. And so I, I look at self-care from a holistic perspective, mind, body, and soul. And so, I mean, like spiritually and all of that, but for mind, it really is, you know, this work, as you said, the work that I do, you know, we're the largest department, we're the messiest department because we're in people's lives. And my mind races around child protective things, youth detention, you know, people experiencing homelessness. You know, I'm concerned we have 300, all of that. And when I, when I, I mean, literally I'm jaded when I read the paper, I read the paper and I'm thinking, is this our clients? What happened here? Is, are these mm-hmm. our kids? You know, somebody got shot. Mm-hmm. This, all, all of that. And, my, and there have been times where, uh, Kelly, I'll be honest with you, I couldn't sleep. My mind would race. Like I'm, I'm up in the middle of the night and I'm, I'm just like, oh my gosh, I, I can't. And I get up, I'm not sleeping. And I get up early. I get to work early, seven, eight o'clock in the morning. I don't, I wasn't leaving to seven and eight o'clock at night. And there is just, it became too much. And so racing, the racing of the mind for me was really one of those things that said, you got to take care of yourself. And the, the stress and my mental wellness is important. And here's what I've learned. Nobody, this is for me. I don't know other, maybe other people have this. Nobody is going to tell me to breast. Nobody's going to tell me to stop. And my husband will. He was like, you're doing too much. You need to stop. <laughs> but you know, it's like that. Shout out to Jazz from Jazz Cast Pros and to my girl, Soda Kuchkowski from Start With Sleep. She has just started her podcast. Super excited to have her on the Jazz Cast Pros Network. Soda and I um, go back a ways. She is a guest on the podcast where we talk about sleep and the healthy benefits of sleep. And she covers all of those things on her podcast. So check out the Doze podcast on Jazzcast Pros Network. Are you ready to unlock the extraordinary potential hidden within you? The truth is, if you're looking to level up your life in any way, getting good, consistent, quality sleep will get you there. Join me on this journey to reset your sleep and reclaim your rhythm. It's time to invest in rest one night at a time. I'm back every Wednesday with a new episode, ready to share my knowledge and empower you to take control of your sleep. Don't miss out on this transformative journey. You don't want to sleep on this. 
when I set the standard that I'm available all the time and I will say yes because I can and I want to and I care, then people just expect you to do it. But I said, if I'm going to be, if I'm going to do and be everything that God has called me to do and be, then I'm supposed to be whole as well. The scripture says that he's come that I might have life and life more abundantly. And what that piece means, nothing missing, nothing lacking. And it is not just spiritual, it is physical, it's emotional, it is mental, it is financial. I mean, it is intellectual, it is so it is all of that. So I've set some things around like here's what I'm going to do to take care of myself, my mind. So I I you know, here I told you I write goals. So I'm like, I'm going to read one book that's not related to work. Now I'm putting, I'm putting some stress on myself. But I did make it where I, that I will engage in things that engages my mind. So it is, you know, having conversations like this with people that I love talking to. It is freeing my mind around breathing. And I know that's physical, but breathing and, and walking and movement, that helped to settle my mind. Oh, and I will tell you a great resource, great resource. And this is where I got a lot of this from. She could be my, my personal therapist because my real therapist doesn't talk nothing about this. Self-care for Black women, Oladara Adeo, A-D-E-E-Y-O. And I actually, and one of the places you can get it is, I think, a second chapter with the the young lady and and her mother who have the virtual bookstore. But I love this book. And so this helped me get on the track of it. So it is Validate Yourself After Experiencing Misogynoir, Black and, and Female. Start your day with silence, mind your business, embrace your bad days, let go of imposter syndrome. And, you know, that is saying like, you know, I, you know, maybe if they find out I'm not as smart or I, I don't. And I, I struggle with that. I'll be honest. But then I, I was reading something that talked about it really is the environment that sets up imposter syndrome. And because we're female and black then the environment, most most environments, they're not expecting us to be smart. They're not expecting us to be articulate. They're not, they're just not expecting that. And then so the the environment and we respond, even when people don't talk, you know when people don't want you there. People have an intuitiveness about themselves when we, they know folks don't care about you. And so the environment helps set that up. And we I think we've taken it on, but you're like, nope. In some places I'm like, I'm the smartest one at this table. Or I'm saying, I know I'm not the dumbest one because some of, some of y'all are saying something else that I'm just like, you dumb as rock. Not that I'm calling you like dumb, but you know, you you're, <laughs> you manage it. And then somebody will say something, you'd be like, confirmation. Right. I'm, I knew right. it. I knew it. I knew it. I know who it was going to be. Yeah, but, but I knew it was going to be I one of it. y'all. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's uh, the mind piece, but probably the most impactful for me centering myself is really committing to consistent prayer and reading scripture in the morning. Like once I made this decision that I wanted to live, um, that I wanted to be healthy, I wanted my mind healthy, I wanted my spirit healthy, I wanted my body healthy, is that I can count the days honestly on one hand where I've walked out of my house without having prayer and then talking to God. And and you know what, because I look at the word and it it is, is, you know, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice in it. And I had to tell my, there are many a days I'm saying, I'm still going to rejoice in this day. I know this is foolishness and I know all of this is able and I know it's dumb, but guess what? I am still going to rejoice. And so that has centered me the most in prayer, just silent time. I don't pick up my phone. I would literally get up, roll over, pick my phone up to see what's happening. And of course, you know, I got all these emails before the day starts. You know, that sets your mind in a framework. My phone, sometimes now I got into the place, like, where's my phone? <laughs> and I'm on, <laughs> and I'm on <laughs> So now because I'm not picking it up and I'm not stressing myself immediately getting up, that has helped. So now I get up, the first thing I'm doing is prayer and I'm reading scripture. 
And then, you know, for me, spiritual part is the connection with people. I've started being intentional about being with people because you can get so consumed in whatever it is that you're you're out of balance. Um, So that has been the most centering, the most peace, peaceful part of this. And, you know, and I just say, listen, there's nothing that's going to happen today that me and God and me, the little me is the little part to this, can't handle. And I know that all things work together for my good, even the good, the bad and the ugly. At some point, God is going to get glory out of this. So that is the, the spiritual piece for me, but being connected. And so when we do a, a women's group, I love, 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 love this women's group because we we're just honest. It is it's scripture based, but we we talk about a whole lot of stuff. But just being with when like when you see other people, like when I see you in the room and how that does my heart well, it's the same kind of thing. So like here, you know, I'm with my black. When I say sisters, my black sisters. This is my community. I was I've been intentional about spending time with my family cuz you know when you get consumed with work like no I can't I can't go out no you know you 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 make different decisions I'm you know and then I have uh, two friends that we've been friends a, a very long time and we actually were meeting uh once a month just to talk about the self care for black women book and we're like okay what did you do cuz we were saying trying to you know, just having connecting and one lives out of a town that now actually my other friend is going to relocate. And so just us connecting, we got shared history. We know where all the bones are buried in our lives. We know all this. That's what's up. <laughs> You're like, girl, you know, I'm going to have to kill you. <laughs> <If> I- <laughs> <laughs> but the other part is oh. that we wanted to support each other in the self-care and we wanted to validate some of the things that that we know have happened. And, you know, because sometimes you're like, is this just me? Am I being oversensitive? And, you know, and, you know, good girlfriend's going to tell you the truth. That one you overreacted, but most of the time you're not. But, you know, just having that. And then the last part, I, I will just say, and I'm going to stop talking, physical, because our bodies, one is the, the, the temple of God. And then our bodies carry us through this life. And so living for me, I had to really pay attention to my health because, you know, my blood pressure was going up. My cholesterol was going up. I was pre-diabetic. I know, listen, I, I'm, if I'm honest with you, I've been in the hospital probably three times in the last two years, stress related because I was having chest pains. And so like, like all of that got me to where I am. And then, so I said, you know, again, if I'm going to be everything God has called me to be and do everything then I got to be healthy. Like I got to be able to carry myself around. I got to be able to, (laughs) this temple, you know, if I want to live a life that honors God, it also means taking care of this body that he gave me. Marie, okay, this is getting too good. We are going to break this up into two episodes because I don't want to stop talking. I want to make sure we dive into the radicalness of your self-care you know, setting those boundaries and what that means and what it looks like for people. So thank you for listening. And we will be back next week with part two of this conversation with Marie Cannon, mother, wife, Black woman, sibling, BFF, minister, so many roles, um, role model, and mentor to many. Until the next time, be the light. If you are looking for resources, you can dial 211 on your phone or go to 211 in your browser if you're in the U.S. And that will lead you to the 211, um, it's the United Way's 211 network um, that will plug you into resources in your community. If you are in crisis or if you know someone who really needs to speak to someone right now, right, and um, you don't know who to turn to, dial 988. There are trained folks answering that phone 24 hours a day, seven days a week that can help you or someone you care about get through a tough situation. Please remember you are not alone. Until the next time, I'm Kelly Marie from Healthy Illness Podcast. Be the light.